Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Betrayal of Crondor. Well, last time you remember, we continued exploring the Dimwood. We swept eastward along the uh, middle western part of the uh, Dimwood. Started about here, and then swept around over here, and now we're in this bit here. So this time we're going to try and sweep our way back around and find a way to cross the river here and hopefully finish exploring the northwest part of the Dimwood. And yeah, I am leaving an embarrassing amount of loot behind at this point because... <laughs> Well, I've only got so much room in my character's inventory, and I've already exhausted most of it. Go ahead and rest a bit. I've already exhausted most of it picking up the best blessed equipment. And trap. Okay, it looks like we can't move this way. And we're kind of cut off moving that way. But this one easier than it looks. So we'll go ahead and move Owen here. Can't move that way because of a cannon. But we have Owen push that. Which will then clear that path. So Locklear can run through the gate there. And we'll just have Gorath wait. And we'll go ahead and push. Actually, that would uh, put him in the path of the cannon, so. Okay, thankfully there was room for that. So now Locklear can run around this way. Alright, well, where there's a trap, there's something worth hiding, and hey, more treasure chests! Alright. Has feathers but cannot fly, rests on legs but cannot walk. Well, this one you have to think a little medieval about, but it is a uh, feather mattress. Now I just remember how to spell mattress. <laughs> and hey, another magic scroll. This one, mirror wall. And 27 gold. Okay, now Mirror Wall. Actually, an incredibly useful spell, but not until later on in the game. Uh, the big thing with it is that we need to use it to uh, repel the spells of other wizards. Of course, we don't run into many of our spellcasters this early in the game, but... Let's see. It flies without wings, drops without fear. But held in warm hands, it will soon disappear. Well, aren't you a special little snowflake? And hey, Surani bow, heavy crossbow, with a heavy string. You know, that strikes me as being a bit more impressive than... Uh... Of course, you do have to be Surani to use it effectively, which none of our characters are. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that in there. And we're sitting on 500 gold at this point and some change. Okay, and the final chest. One pace to the north, two paces to the east, two paces to the south, two paces to the west, one pace to the north. Well, that'd be two, 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 and two. Which would make you walk in a square. And more of Adamir's formula. 
Sword of Kinnur. Greg Kinnur? Yeah. Lockler hefted the sword respectfully. In the hands of its dwarven makers, it has doubtlessly been considered a two-handed bastard sword. But even the most diminutive, uh, diminutive of human beings would have been hard-pressed to get more of a hand and a half over its spiral pummel. So, yes, it's another dwarven sword. But a rather impressive one. And definite better bonus than the uh, human broadsword that we're using. So you know what? I think... Okay, fine. We'll switch that one for that one. Switch that one for that one. Sharpen that. And boom. And I think that's it on this side of the river, or at least here, so go ahead and follow the pathway back around this way. And that appears to be our bridge across, and ah, then we just found the Mortal Hell Camp. Their attack was unexpected. All right, well, let's try out some of our new spells because I do see a witch. And here we go. All right, well, we've got Mirror Wall, which pretty self-explanatory. And Winds of Erotus, we have not used this one yet. It's the opposite of imitation. Uh, Erotus, or Erotus, however you say that, is the dead god of the oceans. In, uh, you know, the Poseidon equivalent in the Pantheon of Menchemia. And basically you blow somebody away from you. And we'll go ahead and do a mirror wall right in front of the witch. And the witch is casting an unfamiliar spell on us. And Gora fell her in one swoop. We'll go ahead and let Owen heal up a bit. And the witches very rarely have anything helpful on their person. And at this point, given some of the loot we've found taking this diversion, none of these guys have anything particularly helpful to us either. Forgot to concentrate. Yep. Any stumps. Okay, we can always use extra keys. A few royals. And it occurs to me I don't think we ever explored this side of this one. And ah. Right into an ambush. And still not healed. Well, might as well use this now. Okay, well that hopefully will keep us alive for a bit longer. I want to have Locklear. I can't quite reach the witches. Uh, this could kill him. Yep. Retreat! It felt shameful. 
For a moment, he entertained the thought of running, of turning around and never placing his life in harm's way again for people or things he cared about. He wished only to be away from the horrid spectacle, but the motionless form of his companion lay bleeding on the ground. He could not abandon his friend to certain death. So, yeah. And I believe they just cast a blinding spell on... Owen. And they're about to do the same explodey spell on him. And this will probably finish Owen off. And they just did Grief of a Thousand Nights on him, but now the witches appear to be running. And, yeah. Locklear gasped. Pain sapping his strength, he was unable to rise from the ground, but dimly he perceived his attacker moving closer. Perhaps to finish him off, perhaps for some other less savory purpose. Bastard! Loraf whispered, his vision began to dark. Limbs Kragma, curse you! Death came swiftly. Well, things were becoming a bit too easy, weren't they? I can't remember if I saved before or after we finished looting this chest. So we'll go ahead and yeah. So yeah, we'll be smart this time. take chances on the witches. we will loot that again. So this time, we camp until healed and rest an extra day for good measure. Okay, so now we're back where we were before that sudden ambush. And it looks like there's a chest right there. And I cannot get to the witches. I mean, even right next to one of them. Hopefully they'll all split their focus.
Okay, which is down. Well, hey, more lock picks. Money and a torch. Yeah, 14 gold, not too bad. But more chests and a grave. Let's see. Inside a burning house, this thing is best to make. And best to make it quickly before the fire's too much to take. Ah. Haste. More antidote, more silver thorn, and a blessed one of uh, those saber swords. Stronger man there never was. I'm guessing. Well, you'd think the strength potion, but no, this one's the uh, the sword fighting one. Came to the dimwood looking for peace. Her smile could warm the coldest day. And yeah, just a body. Speaking of which... Yeah, we hardly need the rations at this point, but... Okay, he can't share with the party, but he can keep for himself. I think... Then over there is where we were before. So yeah, I think we have finished this little section of the Dimwood. So now we can go ahead and take the bridge here. Oh, another chest. Do we want to try and open it? Uh, not until we step back and... It's trapped. Okay, that wounded Owen, but not so badly that uh, it didn't kill the whole party. And let's see, another one of those, another glory hand, and another uh, Surani light crossbow. In case you're wondering why the uh, Surani crossbows look so colorful. Oh, we better use a uh, healing pad on Owen and try and use a couple of healers to get him up to where he's healing on his own. All right. And usually there's either an ambush or a trap on either side of a bridge, and bingo. The enemy jump back! Okay, no witches this time, thankfully. So, uh, just for the heck of it, I'll go ahead and show off Winds of Erotus.
Now I could just keep pushing him back. Uh, you know what, just to give him some extra incentive to stand back. Now you can have a bit of fun using Gambit of the Eight and other spells. In this case, we set up a mine, get ready to do, uh, actually I did not mean to do that one, but thankfully we can just go back in if we click the wrong spell. Go and do a Wind of Erotus. Ah, heck, I'm in the wrong spot. Never mind then. We'll just move here. Ooh, nice shot with that one. Now we will do a push with Wind of Erotus. And boom goes the dynamite. And nothing particularly exciting or helpful. But uh, yes, as I was saying, the reason why Surani bows look so unusual and colorful is that on the Surani world, uh, metal is extremely rare, even common pig iron, to the point where uh, metal armor is a status symbol. But the Surani, having no metal, but having uh, endless creativity with the materials that they had, found a way to treat wood with various resins that made it as strong as steel. So we got our pathway here, and hey, more chests. Should we try to open it? Let's rest first. Okay, Scent of Sarig. And okay, this is beyond our ability to pick, unfortunately. But this one is a riddle chest, thankfully. So let's see. This great thing can be swallowed, but can also swallow us. I'm guessing water. <laughs> uh, more healing. Goodness knows Owen needs it after that last one. And remember there was a building, yeah, I saw a building on the map, but I don't think... The tavern was locked tight. Lockler pressed his nose against the front glass. Holding his hands on his face to cut down on the glares, Owen spoke up. This little sign says the place is called the Fife and Laurel. Lockler backed away from the window. It hasn't been abandoned, but there definitely isn't anybody about. Yes, uh, unfortunately, this little tavern where we could sell a lot of this gear won't be open until later chapters. And stump, and hey, food poison. Which, shockingly, has not been used on that. And there's a tent. Go ahead and follow the river around again. And we may be running across one of the more dangerous creatures in the game, at least at this level. I think we can take it if we're lucky. And, yep, you see that little blue figure right there? Rusalki. 
which uh, for those of you who do not know your Slavic mythology, a Rusalki is the spirit of a young woman who was drowned, usually by a faithless lover, or by a boyfriend who was trying to cover up a pregnancy or something. Either way, it's uh, unspeakably grim whatever prompted this young lady to be drowned. So in death, this young lady attempts to lure young men uh, to their deaths by bodies of water. So we're not, unfortunately, in this game going to have a ghost try and seduce us. That's a different Sierra game. Uh, this one is just going to try and suck the life out of us, and not in a fun way. But we're going to try and charge it. Ice ran the length of Owen's spine. The Rusalki had not been surprised by their attack, and he was now desperately trying to recall what little he knew of temple magic. He regretted not having spent more time studying the text of the Mechemian goddess of death, Lim's Kragma. Within seconds, the ashen-faced creature was in their midst, leering at them with eyes long devoid of life. Now, I don't remember if Grief of a Thousand Nights works on them. Thankfully, it seems it does. And I seem to recall vaguely that they, uh... I can't remember if fire hurts them worse, or if fire doesn't affect them since they're creatures of water, but we'll go ahead and let Owen heal up. All right, and we check the grave here. We have a spell called River Song. Not that River Song. And a plus you know, a plus three rapier. Okay, I have to shuffle inventory around a bit again, but we'll go ahead and heal up so that I'll spend some of the rations. Owen's rations at least, so we can now take the scroll because River Song, oddly enough, allows you to summon a Rusalki. All right, so we've got that now. And we'll go ahead and search around this one. And hey, another quartet of chests. So let's see, this one. You hear it speak for it has a hard tongue, but it cannot breathe for it has not a lung. Well, that would be a bell, I think. Yep. Let's see, more gems, more gold. Bloodless and boneless, it travels about, yet never leaves home. Well, I'd say turtle, but that has blood and bones. Uh, let's see. Oh, snail. Has a tongue but never talks, has no legs but sometimes walks. Well, that could also be a snail, but uh, let's see. Has a tongue, doesn't talk. Hmm. Oh, shoe. It also has a soul. All these glory hands, and you know, I haven't found a Night Scringer scroll yet. You seek it out when your hunger is ripe. It sits on four legs and smokes a pipe. Well, that would be a stove. And here is a scroll. Aha! Speak of the devil. There is our Night Finger spell. Which, as I said before, is not the most helpful spell, because, okay, you can steal something from an enemy's inventory. That doesn't do you much good when it's just as quick to try and kill it. Well, I think we are almost done with the uh, chess of the Dimwood here. Uh, 
And we're actually very close to the uh, end, I think. At least the exit I wanted to take. Well, we'll go ahead and finish checking the mountains to make sure. Ah! And we somehow surprised the scorpions. And uh, it will not bring night fingers up on my inventory since I don't have the material to cast it. But, you know what, we'll go ahead and set that up right in front of Goraf. So this is what I get for trying to be clever. Well, our abilities did increase a bit from that. <laughs> huh, that's weird. You ah. Knew there had to be a chest of scorpions nearby. What goes down to the cellar of four legs but comes back with eight? I remember this one from before I played before just because the answer... They changed it to a proper term. It's an old riddle. The answer to the original riddle is cat, but there's way too many letters. So in this case, we're looking for a mouser. Which I don't know about you, I'm maybe showing my age, but I hear Mouser. I think of the bomb throwing my skies from uh, Super Mario Brothers 2. But yeah, we have got a fair bit of uh, poison there, and antidote, surprisingly enough. And hey, a body. But the rations are poisoned, which is probably why you see that dead body here. I think there's the bridge we came in. I think that is the pathway out of the Dimwood. Might be one more fight on the road. Locklear's legs ached. It seemed like he'd been walking for eternity in the long stretch of road to the north did nothing for his enthusiasm. We can keep going this way, or we can turn about. Keep going? Yes. Snow capped the mountains. Locklear motioned for a temporary halt as they came through the pass into their new surroundings. Vaguely, he could sense the cold that was coming down from the north and could imagine it maybe even colder on the other side of the teeth of the world. So, yes, we have made it to the area just south of High Castle. The one section of the game world that you do not have to go to in the course of playing Betrayal at Crondor. And that is what we will begin exploring next time. We'll see you then.